107. Speaking now on Channel 107 to Guitar Mal, who is spending time in Irkutsk, Siberia, Russia. What is life like? Irkutsk lies in the south and east part of Siberia. It's very remote indeed, although it is one of the most heavily industrialised parts of Asia, if not the most. It is also very close to one of the largest lakes in the world. Guitar Mal has gone there for a trip. So I speak to him to find out more about what life is like in what he dubs as sunny Siberia. He is based in the small town of Angarsk, which used to be closed to any foreign visitors. When I called him on Skype, it was almost half past eleven at night where he was, some eight hours ahead of the UK. That part of Siberia shares the same time zone as mainland China. Hello. Hi. So I'm speaking to I'm speaking to Guitar Mal. You're usually based in Cheshire. Um, only about halfway across the county, but now you're a third of the way across the world because you've actually gone to the far east of Russia. Um, but not, not quite the far east, but actually a long way east across Russia. You're in Siberia. Um, you're in a part of the world um, that's known as the Irkutsk Oblast because the oblasts are known as the regions in Russia. Yes. Um, so... What, what what's it like then? Simply um, uh, cuts because I mean I, I've heard that it's one of the largest um, conurbations and towns in the entire Siberian region. Oh, well, I guess that's true. I mean, um, you probably know more about the general geography of the region than I do. But uh, I'm actually staying in the the, the main conurbation north of Irkutsk, which is a new town. Um, which is about 60 years old, I think. Uh, it was established from scratch, a bit like Milton Keynes, if you like. And it's called Angarsk, or Angarsk. Um, so it has a population not as big as Irkutsk. Um, but it's um, a sizable population, nonetheless. Mm. And uh, in fact, up until very recently, I think maybe 10 years ago it was still on the, the list of Russia's secret cities that um, visitors were not allowed to enter basically oh right I mean what's there now what can you see you know as a visitor now <laughs> there's actually not a lot to see um, in fact what there is on the edges of town you and I would be very familiar with which is really like the Russian equivalent of uh, the Stanlow oil refinery and all the various chemical and petrochemical works surrounding it. Um, we've got the same sort of background of um, you know, like a water source as this big Angara River and the salt, the availability of salt and as I presume uh coal and things for firing up the industry but it's it's it all looks very familiar in terms of you know stanlow um for example and, and pipes everywhere and things and steam coming up a bit like you know when you're driving through the edge of northwich or something it's all a very familiar sort of industrial landscape in a way so it is a heavily industrial area um in yes. Irkutsk, you say it's petrochemical. Um, generally, yeah. What what are all the different things? I don't know. Um, I guess um, I don't know. You know, I'm only sort of looking at the, the visible industry. I don't know what what associated industries there are there. You know, it's um, the petrochemical thing is the most obvious one, and I think that's the thing that the town is mostly based on but chemicals obviously as well you know the the, the outskirts of town where the the this sort of industry is has a, has a very reminiscent smell of witness and run corn <laughs> it's all very familiar and would you say it's as vast as um, the Stanlow Industrial Park? Because that is absolutely huge. Would you say that it's just as big in scale, what they've got? Um, 
I, I don't know. It's difficult to gauge because um, most of the time I'm in town and uh, in fact, we went for a drive. Um, someone took us for a drive and just a little sightseeing tour, if you like, of the industrial parts. And yeah, it seemed it seemed big, but I don't know how much of it I actually saw. If you see what I mean? Well, I, 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 yeah, exactly. It could be it could be so big that you just don't know how much of it you actually saw. Now, you know, you, you, you said when um, when you you did your first Facebook update from. Um, Siberia because you know you, you actually were there for quite a while you didn't get online so that gave the impression of it being quite remote um, that you yes. were in sunny Siberia now Siberia is known for being very cold but um, what's it actually like where you are well you see it's <laughs> it, it has seasons <laughs> believe it or not it has uh, winter and summer and spring and autumn and uh, summer uh, can be very hot um and we're we're just the same as england the seasons are the same because right where i am now is uh, in the same latitude as birmingham for example um although you know the being in the middle of a vast continent changes the weather patterns a little bit there's no gulf stream or whatever but uh, it's it basically it's it shares a sort of same seasons as, as we do um, so we're going at the moment from summer into autumn and just before I arrived the weather was they had bad weather for a week uh, when I arrived um, it turned into very good weather very very hot um, one day it was um, it was like it was just continental it was like the south of France wow um, That's not or something. even like Libya, in fact, and it was 34 degrees when I, they had some, uh, there was a, a petrol station with a, a thermometer thing, digital thing, and uh, it said 34 degrees. And then yesterday evening, for example, we were out all day, we, we on a, on a, a little tour of the um, Circum Baikal Railway. And we got back into Irkutsk at 11 o'clock in the evening, and it was still showing 20 degrees on one of these temperature things. Wow, yeah. So I mean, but you're not going to be there into the winter. I mean, presumably it gets very, very harsh around Christmas or something like that. I mean, you know. Starting from, yeah, starting from, I think they said November. Once it freezes, it freezes, and that's it. Everything stops, you know, um road works building work everything and it's then it's solid frozen for three months or four i don't know but uh, generally um you know i think temperatures drop to as low as minus 20 or something like that but generally yeah. there are even colder parts of siberia where you know the well, summer temperatures don't even reach this sort of level so you no know, the average temperature is minus 20 wow so that's an average i mean it's an av averagely <laughs> bloody cold temperature obviously when I mean, that that's it, it was, uh minus 45 some part of last uh, last winter here so whereabouts in, in the world is this uh, really if, if you wanted to picture it if you wanted to picture it's very easy to find actually if you're looking at a globe or on google earth or something you just have a look at the whole of russia then scan about halfway across and at the bottom of russia there's a lake which is diagonal from us like bottom left to top right i mean it's it's just like a diagonal long lake and that's lake baikal and uh, it's the largest freshwater lake in the world so it's easy to spot for that very reason and irkutsk is at the bottom end of this this huge lake so I mean, this is I mean, this is putting you on the level of being quite close to Mongolia and, and, and China in the world almost, map. Almost on the Mongolian border, in fact. Uh, it, it was probably quite a long way if you tried to drive there, but um, it, it looks close if you look at the map. Uh, I'm sure it isn't if you tried to, to actually go there. But yeah, it's on. It's pretty much on the Mongolian border, and there's a lot of um, people of Mongolian origin here 
um, mainly because, of course, they were they were the original inhabitants, and uh, they were invaded by the the the, 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 the Russians. You know, the sort of Caucasian Russians, or whatever they, you know, the people we normally think of as being Russians, are basically uh, uh, as original here as the, the so-called Americans are in North America. I mean, it, and Australians are in Australia, it's invaders, basically. I mean, it's an area that has seen some conflict in the past due, due to that. Um, so, would you say that a lot of people, I mean, the further you go east, it's going to sound very crude, but people start looking more and more Asian with those Asian eyes. So, you're seeing a lot of that because that, you're quite far east in, in this part of Siberia. Let's say, uh, I, I don't know, I, if I had to guess, I'd say about 5% of the people have that sort of appearance and apparently well it's it's a really strange experience for me because quite possibly i'm the only person in in the whole of angarsk who speaks who is english and possibly one of the very few who speaks english and it's very strange because um every time you say we're standing somewhere with um, a crowd of people as soon as i open my mouth and start talking everybody looks around <laughs> oh my god what's this because actually the then they're used to hearing foreign languages from people who look different but apparently i blend in uh, quite well into the the general appearance of the majority of the population that I, I don't look on russian because they they think of themselves as being european it's quite a caucasian look generally isn't it that kind of carries Basically, across europe it. and russia so they're they really not used to hearing caucasian people speaking anything other than russian so it's quite strange i get quite conscious of it as soon as i start talking english it's not immediately Everybody obvious but it's, it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's like what's this it's and to be the only person in town probably the only english person in 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 a in a huge population it's it's really quite um a different experience really and would you say that you know the language simply is russian yes it is apart from you know there are the, the still the minority languages um but everybody here has to speak Russian, really. Mm -hmm. But is there a sort of dialect going at all? Because sometimes, you know, in, in places that are very, very vastly far apart, I mean, you know, she, you often find that, that there's a culture that becomes sort of isolated a bit more. I mean, do you see that? Do you see a dialect? I think it's like in Wales, you know, the biggest, the biggest cities, uh, they speak English, and then you need to go out into the country to hear the the original languages and uh, apparently it's the same here that's a great analogy really to describe because you know it's such a big city that it's probably connected very culturally to the rest of russia so yeah, yeah so we'll get to that yeah. we'll get to that now what what what's that like as a city then Irkutsk, as you rightly pronounced there well um i don't know if i rightly pronounced it it's probably not far off um you see most of my time really is spent in angarsk which is quite different to irkutsk so um and angarsk is as i say a new town and it's quite easy to describe really because it's it's um it, it's constructed mostly of these soviet style apartment blocks um, which can all look very similar. Quite municipal, quite... Um, oh, very municipal, yeah. Extremely uh, um, similar, yeah. Yeah, except there's, there's a lot of... In between, there's a lot of trees, um, a lot of wild flowers, um, wild, wild plants. Um, yeah, it, it all seems very regular when you first encounter it but then the more the longer you hear the more you discover the different parts of town and there's the older center and uh, there's the old uh, original like siberian type dwellings um wooden i would say wooden shacks they're not really shacks but they're houses made of originally of logs 
and um, there's an awful lot of them in an extremely dilapidated looking condition and at first sight you think surely nobody lives there but in fact they do and it's um, <laughs> it can be a little bit disconcerting a lot of them have like um, subsided so that they're not they're not flat and level anymore and they just seems to be a general state of dilapidation and I was quite worried about this until you know traveling through the countryside and the, the, the same sort of buildings the, you know the original Siberian type buildings they all seem to be in much better repair and the it's like the inhabitants seem to take more care of them it's like as if it's being in the city um it, it, it just don't it just don't care anymore and it's it's all a bit of a mess maybe that's the same everywhere it'd be the same if you're going through birmingham for example or in the suburbs of i don't know any big big city compared to say going through a little village in the cotswolds for example mm, it's just you know, what's needed to get by I um, guess, and you know. So what? Um, so what can you find in the shops then? What, what what's it like for supermarkets and things like that? Well, let me just say a little bit about Irkutsk, uh, and uh, because that's what you originally asked me about. It is, I mean, yeah. I've been to Irkutsk about four, four or five times, I guess, um, visiting. So I've seen quite a lot of it, and. Uh, it's a much older city. I think it's like they're celebrating something like 350 years, and it's quite a very interesting history. So culturally, it's and architecturally, it's a lot more diverse. Um, and and uh, it's it, it's it's a it's a flatter city in the terms of it hasn't got so many apartment blocks. So all the buildings there's a lot more like two-story buildings. But one thing that really strikes you about everything here that whether it's the buildings or I guess mostly the buildings but colour schemes in general is the colours are all different you know they choose colours paints and different combinations of paints that just you wouldn't see in in Britain for example and um, it's very nice it's all it gives a whole different feel to the the city I mean you get these beautiful deep blues and things on the, some of the buildings, the older traditional buildings, but on all the buildings you get all these sort of pastel shades of blue and green and yellow and even purple and things It's it makes it all look very different well, That makes it sound less conformist generally, I mean there are a few examples of where um, villages in Britain, etc. They've they've chosen to paint houses and make it much more colourful. But then, you know, generally well, like speaking, there's a lot of for example. Yeah, but Scotland, say, or Llanberis in North Wales. Believe it or not, I saw that there was a lot. There was a lot of um, buildings painted there yeah. in, in bright colours, and it makes it a lot better than just the dull, usual dull and dreary um, towns and cities that are all conformist and that. But did you? Um, in a cuts though, did did you actually see any um, global brands? Oh, there are global brands, but not so many. Um, I would say um, y yes. Um, really, not. I'm trying to think. Adidas, for example. Um, but you don't really. You, you're asking about the shops. Things yeah. you don't. The shops. Are barely recognisable as shops to, to sort of our European way of thinking because some of well some of them are and but let me say there's two different types of shops or well, there's more than two different types of shops but I'd say in in, in the main there's shops as we'd recognise them where there's like a shop front and it's obvious what the general theme of the shop is you know like it's a fashion shop or it's a hairdressing salon or uh, something of, of this nature but most of the time there's a sort of door that seems to could be any door that goes into any building and nothing particularly special about it and you go inside and it's like the nearest thing I could describe is it's like going into um, um, a, a market building you know market hall 
in England where inside the hall there's different stalls selling different things and owned by different people and so you go inside this building and you don't know the first time you go in you're not sure where exactly you're going and suddenly there's these these stalls and they're all they're all like um, they're all in glass you know the walls are in glass um, so you can't actually touch anything <laughs> you know it's, everything's behind glass um, and these stalls are some, maybe the same size as a market stall in England um, and um, so there'll be one market stall selling like tea another market stall selling fruit well they're not called market stalls they're actually the shops within the shops they call them pavilions pavilion or something like that 